Welcome to Mikon's hardware. By the end of 2020 and at the beginning of 2021, Chinese have replaced most of their X99 motherboards with the chip alternatives using B85, H81 and sometimes Z87 chipsets. Unfortunately, these motherboards have additional problems compared to X99 and C612 chipsets. Also, I have not yet tested most of these new motherboards, that's why I cannot safely recommend one or another motherboard. The old tested motherboards are almost out of stock everywhere. That's why I have decided to assemble a small configuration for about the same price as Xeon E52678 Plus X99 platform and see what we can achieve in terms of performance in games using the modern platform. On my channel I have already tested AMD Ryzen 5 3600 and AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. That's why this time I have decided to go the Intel path and I have picked Intel Core i3 10100F. This is the same CPU as Intel Core i3 10100, but the difference is that 10100F does not have built-in graphics card. Thus, if you would like to use this CPU, you always need to have an external graphics card. Even something really, really basic would work, but this CPU would not work without a graphics card. And if you plug your monitor to the motherboard HDMI output, it will not work. You need to plug it to the graphics card. All technical configuration about my hardware setup for this test you will find by the end of the video in my technical slides, but still I would like to mention that the CPU was tested with the DDR4-2666. Core i3-10100F supports maximum speed of DDR4-2666 and you need an expensive Z490 motherboard to be able to overclock RAM with this CPU. That is why I have decided to test it with the stock memory configuration, because this will be the memory configuration you will be able to achieve with cheap H410 and B460 motherboards. Right now on AliExpress there is an interesting motherboard from TinUe called TinUe B460 and that's the motherboard I'm going to review next when it arrives to me. But for today's video I'm going to use MSI Z490 motherboard, even though the memory speed was not overclocked and CPU was not overclocked. This means that today's results you will be able to achieve with cheap H410 and B460 motherboards and you do not need to buy expensive Z490 motherboard. In this video I'm going to focus on 1080p and 1440p results, but if you're curious you can also see 4K results on your screen. To make the video more valuable I also add Ryzen 5 5600X results onto my crafts. Still, it's important to mention that my Ryzen 5 5600X results are slightly outdated. Since I have tested my Ryzen 5, a few of the games were updated, Windows has also updated itself a few times. This means that with all the latest updates, Ryzen 5 5600X will most likely perform slightly better than what I am showing on the pictures. As usual, let's start with Battlefield 5. Here, i3-10100F provides slightly better 1% low results, but Xeon E5-2678v3 2678 has better average FPS. At 1080p, Xeon E5 provides 64 1% low FPS and 150 average FPS. Core i3 is able to deliver 73 1% low FPS, but only 135 FPS on average. At 1440p the values are almost the same, which means that both of the CPUs are limiting AMD RX 6800 XT. Far Cry New Dawn. This is a very non-optimized game which is using only 1.5 CPU cores. Still, both of the CPUs are delivering identical performance. Most likely it's related to the fact that Xeon E5 2678v3 has much more cache on the CPU and 4 memory channels, while i3-10100F has only 2 memory channels and much less cache on the CPU. Assassin's Creed Valhalla Here, Core i3-10100F and Xeon E5 2678v3 deliver almost identical average FPS, but i3 is slightly better on minimal. At 1080p the values are 36 and 116 FPS for Xeon and 43 and 119 FPS for Core i3. At 1440p we have 36 and 95 for Xeon and 40 and 95 for i3. Assassin's Creed Odyssey – much the same picture. Minimal FPS is better with Core i3, average FPS is almost identical. Watch Dogs Legion. In this game, Xeon E5 2678v3 is able to slightly pull ahead from Core i3-10100F. 
At 1080p the difference is 15%, at 1440p the minimal FPS difference is again 15%, but the averages are only 7% apart. F1 2019 Even though this game really likes CPUs with high frequency, here i3-10100F is not able to match Xeon E5-2678 V3. The difference at 1080p and 4014p is roughly 10%. Dirt Rally 2 – one more racing game where Xeon E5 2678V3 is faster than Core i3 10100F. At 1080p Xeon is faster by 9 and 14%, at 1440p the difference is 8 and 9%. Shadow of the Tomb Raider – this is a very well optimized and very demanding game. Still, Xeon E5 2678V3 is only 9% faster at 1080p and 7% faster at 1440p. Minimal FPS value is almost identical between both of the CPUs. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege At 1080p and 1440p, both of the CPUs are able to deliver more than 250 frames per second, thus the 5% difference here and there doesn't make much sense. Call of Duty Modern Warfare This is the only game I have tested which has any problems with Core i3 10100F. The CPU utilization goes very high and the game is basically unplayable. Average FPS is kinda ok, but the minimal FPS constantly drops to 0 frames per second, which makes the game absolutely unplayable. I have tested the game with and without MSI Afterburner, only to find out exactly the same results. With the 10100F, Call of Duty Modern Warfare was not playable for me. Still, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is playing with Core i3 10100F with no issues. Yes, the performance is not as good when compared to E5 2678V3, but the game was playable. At 1080p, Xeon was 18 and 17% faster, at 1440p the difference was 11 and 13%. Even though it's a rather big difference between these two CPUs, it still was possible to play Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War with 4-core Core i3-10100F. Gears 5 – Both of the CPUs are delivering very similar performance, but Xeon E5 2678V3 is about 5-10% faster when compared to i3-10100F. Horizon Zero Dawn – At 1080p and 1440p, both of the CPUs are delivering once again almost identical performance, the difference is just a few percent here and there. Hitman 2 – at 1080p, Xeon E5 2678V3 is 10 and 4% faster than Core i3. At 1440p, minimal FPS is slightly better with Core i3, average FPS is still better with the Xeon E5. Basically, very comparable and almost identical performance between both of the CPUs. Metro Exodus One more game which doesn't really see a difference between Xeon E5 2678V3 and Core i3 10100F. Red Dead Redemption 2 – much the same picture. Both of the CPUs are delivering almost identical performance. Mafia 2 Definitive Edition – this is a very old and very non-optimized game. Here Core i3-10100F, which has much higher CPU clock frequency, defeats Xeon E5-2678 V3 rather significantly. At 1080p the difference is 29 and 15%, and at 1440p the difference is 71 and 24%. DSC World or Digital Combat Simulator World is another game which is not very well optimized for multi-core CPUs. Here, Core i3-10100F defeats Xeon E5-2678V3 at 1080p by 27 and 11%, at 1440p by 27 and 4%. Now, let's combine all of those results together and see how these two CPUs compare to each other at 1080p with AMD RX 6800 XT. All in all, if I combine all results of all 18 games tested, Core i3-10100F is 3% slower when it comes to minimal FPS and 4% slower when it comes to average FPS. If I remove Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the worst result for Core i3, and Mafia 2, the worst result for Xeon E5, then the comparison between the CPU slightly changes. Minimal FPS is 2% better with Core i3-10100F, Average FPS is still better with the Xeon E5 by 4%. At 1440p we have almost the same picture. On average, Xeon E5 2678V3 is 5% faster than Core i3-10100F. With Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Mafia 2, minimal FPS is identical between both of the CPUs. 
Removing Call of Duty and Mafia 2, we have 2% in favor of Core i3 10100F when compared to Xeon E5 2678V3 by minimal FPS. As expected, at 4K or 2160p, both of the CPUs are demonstrating almost no difference. So, the performance between the CPUs is almost identical, but how about the power consumption? Here, Core i3 10100F, which is using kinda modern process node and has only 4 CPU cores, consumes significantly less power compared to 12 cores Xeon E5 2678V3. Using F1 2019 benchmark, entire system with Core i3 10100F consumes 220-240 watts, while the same system with the Xeon E5 2678V3 consumes 290-310 watt. Switching to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, i3 system consumes 280-30 watt, while E5 2678V3 system consumes 360-380 watt. So, on average, the power consumption difference between Core i3 and Xeon E5 systems is about 70 to 80 Watt. How significant it is, it's up to you to decide. Now, let's take a look at what kind of system we can assemble using both of the CPUs. Right now, both of them can be found on AliExpress for around 80 euros. For Xeon E5 2678V3, I have picked Veneda X99 as the motherboard. Even though the motherboard has quite weak VRM cooling, it's probably one of the last available options for those who want a real X99 or C612 chipset without paying about 100 euros for Huanandri X99 TF or Tinsha X99 D8. For memory, I have picked 4 sticks 8GB each from Klisre DDR4-2666 for around 100 euros. CPU cooler will be Snowman with 220mm fans. It would cost you about 20 euros. All in all, the total price will be 270 euros. For Core i3 10100F, we can take Tin Yue B460 motherboard, which cost about 80 euros. Important to mention that I have not yet tested this motherboard, I don't know if it's good or bad, thus I do not advertise it. I am expecting this motherboard to arrive to me for testing, but before that I cannot recommend it. I am just taking it as an example. The same memory configuration, 4 sticks, 8GB each, DDR4-2666 from Klisre. For the CPU cooler we can take the same snowman, but this time with just 120mm fan, and the total price for this system would be 277 euros. The difference with the Xeon E5 2678V3 is just 7 euros. If you would like to have a branded motherboard, you can find something like MSI B460M Pro VDH for about 110 euros. These motherboards are also available in many local stores, which means that you don't really have to buy it from AliExpress. For example, for me, I can find these B460 motherboards for 80 to 120 euros, fully new and with full warranty. But if you're limited to AliExpress, such configuration will cost you around 307 euros. Of course, both of the platforms have their options to further reduce the total price. For example, with the Xeon E5 2678V3 we can use 4 sticks 4GB each, that will be a bit cheaper. It's also possible to use only two 8GB sticks for 16GB of RAM, but in this case Xeon E5 will be limited to only dual-channel memory configuration and the performance will be slightly worse. With Core i3 10100F we can safely pick only two 8GB memory sticks because the CPU itself is limited to two memory channels. It's also possible to take the cheapest possible CPU cooler, because Core i3 10100F has only 4 CPU cores and it's very cool. It almost feels like the CPU doesn't need an external cooler at all. All in all, both of the platforms have their pros and cons, so let's talk about that. As we can see from the results, 4 cores, 8 threads is almost enough for almost every modern game. Still, there are such games, such as Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which do not work well with 4 cores and 8 thread CPUs. Probably we can argue that this is a problem of the game, because another Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is working with no problem, and any other game is also working with no issues. Still, we have what we have. On one side, I was really impressed by this 4-core CPU, on the other side, I was a bit disappointed. So, 
The CPU has only 4 cores, 8 threads, still it's able to deliver almost the same gaming performance as Xeon E5 2678V3, which has 12 cores and 24 threads. This is mighty impressive, but it also demonstrates of how not optimized the games are. On the other hand, if you would like to do any kind of side tasks, for example streaming your gaming, or for example if you would like to record a video, or you just have something running in your background, then Core i3 10100F might be a bottleneck. This CPU is simply not having any headroom to do anything extra except of your gaming. Sometimes CPU utilization goes as high as 70, 80 or even 90% and this means that most likely you will have to upgrade your CPU in a year or two. These results are also applicable for those who are having Intel Core i7 7700K, 6700K, 4790K, 4770K and 3770K. Quite often people are asking me if they should switch from LJ1155 and LJ1150 to X99 and Xeon E5 2678V3. Here you have got yourself an answer. If you're playing just games, don't do that, overclock your CPU and wait until you can buy something significantly faster, for example Core i5 10400F or Ryzen 5 3600. These CPUs can be found on AliExpress right now for a really good price. On the other hand, if you would like to do something extra than just gaming or you need a powerful workstation, then X99 plus Xeon E5 2678V3 would be a great upgrade compared to those old 4-core CPUs. Nevertheless, in my opinion, both options Core i3 10100F and Intel Xeon E5 2678V3 have a sense. For example, if you are playing games and just games and you don't want to bother with the Turbo Boost Unlock, you don't want to bother with possibly defective or possibly malfunctioning X99 motherboards from China, then Core i3-10100F would be a really good and budget option for you. On the other hand, if you need a powerful workstation, for example for video recording, for streaming, for video encoding, decoding or for software development, then Xeon E5 2678V3 will deliver a much better performance. But you have to be ready to buy a Chinese X99 motherboard, you have to be ready to apply the Turbo Boost Unlock procedure, and possibly you would have to work around some other issues such as non-working smartphone, malfunctioning USB ports or something like that. It all comes down to which motherboard you buy. All in all, I really liked my Core i3 10100F CPU, it's really budget efficient, it's really energy efficient, and I will most likely use it in multiple of my budget and gaming oriented builds. But you can decide yourself if you want Core i3 10100F or Xeon E5 2678V3. Both ways have their pros and cons, and you are free to pick which one you find more reasonable. Also remember to compare prices for your second-hand market, if you for example able to pick up a second-hand LG1200 motherboard, then Core i3-10400F might be upgraded to Core i5-10400F, and then you will get a much better performance, because i5 has 6 cores, i3 has just 4 cores. For now though, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, goodbye.